check, check. Is this on? Okay. Can you hear me? All right. All right. I think we're uh, going. So I'm recording. Uh, my name is Brian. We're making some mid-century modern end tables, and these are the legs. I had uh, used a template and shaped them with a template and a router. And along the way, I made some mistakes, and so we had to fill them with epoxy. I had to do three different pours at three different times, so it took a while. But uh, I thought I'd make the best of it and make some sculptures. This guy's called The Knife. Um, you can see why. And so I don't know why I'm spending time on this. This is not woodworking, but this is uh, crafting. So there you go. It's beautiful. Make a good paperweight. So I'm going to clean up a little bit around here and uh, look at that. That's the epoxy was on that. So it uh, basically peeled the paint. So now you have a new paint remover. So that was the uh, epoxy. But anyways, we're cleaning up. And that happened, Shit. but you know, that happens. What's more important is the knife sculpture is okay. It's gonna be a good paperweight. So I used some hot glue to dam these up. And so I decided I'd use Mr. Heater and I'm not objectifying. Uh, my heater identifies as a mister. And so it's actually on, on his back. It says Mr. Heater. So it's Mr. Heater to soften up this hot glue. And you can see it works pretty good, actually. I was kind of proud of myself, to be honest with you, because I don't have a heat gun. That probably would work pretty well to do this, but doodle loop just comes right off. The end goal is we're gonna go ahead and get this hot glue removed, and then we're gonna run these through the router to get them to their final shape. And so to get there, we gotta get through this hot glue. And Mr. Heater's helping. And here we go, some of it uh, kinda, wait, came back. Oh, okay, so anyways, that happened. Can't explain it. One of the best tools I have in the wood shop is my nails. When I think about it, um, it's the best tools I've ever had. Beats a screwdriver, hammer. The nails uh, I've used on many projects. Again, bring out your nails and uh, get these off. That came out really clean there. That was perfect. Warm up the little feetsies. It's a cold day here in Nebraska. We get uh, seven degree, degree days, and then we get 30 Hot. degree days. It's just cray cray. Now I've come to hate this router table, and I'm gonna straight up say, if you have a chance, don't buy it. It's just cumbersome. It'd be better off buying a rig and making a table, to be honest with you. There's a lot of downsides, which I might go over. I'm trying to figure out the height here, but this is all for naught, because really I just need it to be above, uh, to right against the natural wood there in most spots. A couple other spots, I'm gonna have to get a template out and reattach that, but it's uh, working pretty well, as you can see. Epoxy has this tendency to get really staticky so it will just stick to you. It's kind of a tracking device of sorts. I feel like we should be able to use it somehow. The technology of epoxy. But here I uh, kind of realized I'm not gonna use the, put it on exactly how I put it on before. 
I'm going to flip it around because basically I just need a straight edge over here. And then I had the epiphany. I better make sure it's straight. So I got my little square and uh, a triangle. Why did I call it a square when it's actually a triangle? A triangle actually squares things up. Hmm. Interesting. So, got it all squared up. Like I said, I used, uh, if I used the edge that was originally on there, I'd uh, remake the problem again. This is one of the reasons I don't like this table. I have to pull out the bit to make sure to raise it so it gets to the height that it needs to be. And so every time I want to adjust it, I have to take it out and use my brute, brutal strength, my intense strength to get it back to where I need it to be. And that looks like it's good, right? Does it not look like it's good? It looks good. And then it's not good. Why is it not good? It looked good. Now it's not good. It's not good. So I have to go a little higher and I don't have uh, any room to spare. And so I curse a little bit and I don't uh, encourage cursing, but that kind of says it shit, all though. Shit. Curse words kind of say it all. So I have to undo this again. I think I did this three times maybe just to get these done. But the sketchy thing about this is I'm pulling the bit out of its uh, jacket, so to speak. So it has the risk of flying out. And I did actually have that happen with this router one time. I was routing and it just started coming out. That's kind of scary. It's hard to duck from a router bit. So just be careful. This is a huge uh, bit, extends quite a bit. But I think, uh, there we go. Okay, now we got it. Now we're cooking with gas. Uh, it's like a snow globe. Look at that. It is kind of cool in a way. I could see why epoxy is trending right now. It's, it's pretty fun to work with. There we go. It's looking good. Look at that divot. That was pretty uh, monstrosity. And look at it just clinging to me. So a lot of world working is uh, rinse and repeat. And we're repeating on this one. This one I kind of shaved it slowly. Um, I like that. Let's just pause for a second. It's so beautiful. And staticky. Okay, where was I? I got mesmerized for a second there. Just a little more to go. Looking good. Now that hot glue, just a warning, I guess, will stick um, to your router bit. It's really not hurting anything, uh, but it could hurt your cut at some point. This particular pour is tacky, as you can see. But uh, what I found with epoxy is if you get it time, it's probably hard underneath, which it turns out it is. So you'll be fine. Let's clean up. Listen to a little music while we clean up the shop a little bit and get organized. Okay, 
there we go. Now these are cut with a template which I made from hand and there's a minute or microscopic uh, difference from the right to the left. So I want to make sure that I put these legs together um, as a pair so that each leg is identical. And so uh, less sanding, I guess, is what it comes down to. The top of the legs, I decided not to really worry about too much because it's going to go under the table. And uh, I suspect that I might even those out at some point on the table saw or something, make a final cut. So I'm making sure these are stuck together as best as possible. Now, if you're wondering where we're going with this, uh, I don't know. Well, I do know. Now I know. Where we're going with this is we got to get these put together because I'm going to sand them so that the inside of the legs are extremely flat so that when I go to the next stage, which is to use a round over bit, um, that uh, it has a nice flat, even uniform surface to ride across because otherwise it will transfer all those bumps and undulations into the wood and we don't want that. So we're just sticking these together and I'm clamping them because basically I'm gonna come back tomorrow which is today which is like one minute from now to start sanding these. Now there's a whole hunk of tools that I wish I had. I wish I had a nice, good belt sander, disc sander combo. Today's, like I had mentioned earlier, is Nebraska, so today's a nice day. And here's the gifts from my wife every week. She hides little boxes in the garage I don't know if she thinks that maybe I use boxes for wood or I think she thinks I use the boxes to make wood or something because she always leaves them in the garage. So every time I come out, I get those little gifts. So regardless the hows and whys of it, uh, I feel like the belt sander was the best option here. You could use a disc sander if you wanted to, but here I'm a little confused on what's the best way to secure this in sand, so I'm going all over the place. I finally figured it out. That's kind of really, now I'm like contemplating things here. And then I think I come up with the best way is just to clamp it like this, do the inside and outside. And so we're getting there slowly but surely. Lots of sanding. But this is exactly what I want. Is what you saw there is I want it really flat. I got these little, uh, I don't know what you call them. I forgot the word, but uh, they're sanding blocks, I suppose, but they're not blocks. Just like triangles aren't square, but they help you square. A lot of inconsistencies here. So, anyways, those things work pretty nice. I picked them up on Amazon for a few dollars. Oh, Hello. What's this? Hey, honey, what's up? Look what I got. Oh my God. What is? Just the marshmallows. No way. Yeah. Yeah, I tried them. They taste like Lucky Charms. Well, yeah, they're just a little burst of sugar in your mouth. Should we go to the casino? I don't think they work that <laughs> Yeah, so what do you think? Here we go. Nice. Okay. I really see the progress. Progress? Progress. <laughs> Honey, can you feed me a lucky charm? Don't I always? <laughs> Maybe? I don't know if this is... Holy shit. 
<laughs> oh, no, no, as demeaning as I was, I still feel lucky. <laughs> Those are good. Mm. Okay, little nice visit from my wife. Um, is that spousal abuse? Like a police report says she consistently stuffs marshmallows in my face. It's kind of a a tough case I think to win but here we are contemplating life again take a little break cafe cafe put a little music on for a second Looking beautiful, nice and flat and flush, and this is kind of what I'm looking for. And you'll see in a bit exactly the hows and whys of it. But I'm pretty happy. You got to be real careful in these corners. Look and uh, see. That's the thing about this furniture. I made a coffee table. Oh, wait a minute. On. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that was close. I had to run out the front door, run around the backyard, and pretend like I was working again. So, not to mix these up, I decided to label them and which side's inside out. So, there's A and then there's B. So, that's just to uh, keep straight which sides I want facing out, which edges are going to be the best. I used uh, two sided carpet tape. I'm uh, promoting that currently. Uh, I had, uh, anyways, I'm not going to go into it. But uh, yeah, two sided carpet tape. It works wonderful. I think I saw it on another channel and it works great. It's better than using uh, masking tape and the crazy glue or CA glue. So now I'm getting the insides, outsides, getting the details finished up, making sure everything's really, 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 really good. So there you have it. All right, here we go. I think it's looking good. You can see it. it's uh, pretty nice here, I'd say. It's all pretty. Okay. There we go, looking flat. Uh, that wasn't that easy, by the way. You got to balance that and drum at the same time. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. No, thank you. Thank you. So that was for free. This whole video is for free, to be honest with you. Okay, so where are we? Cleaning up. There we go. That's the round over bit. I think it's a half inch round over a bit is what they call it. So that bearing's gonna ride along all those wonderful flat surfaces that I just created. And then we gotta deal with this little router situation again. Here's the glue I was talking about. That hot glue kind of gums up. It's not affecting the blades at all. Uh, this just uh, keeps you from dying, I guess. I don't know. So first I'm going to do some te test cuts, see how deep uh, we're going to get it. 
and the, it's kind of like uh, porridge. That one's not deep enough. So we're gonna use my extreme strength to push it up a little higher. Try it again. Is this one gonna be good? Still not quite what I'm looking for. I think I want to get it use the whole face without digging into it. So just flush enough. I think that's it. I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. I guess he likes it a lot. Now here I'm just going to mark the bottoms. Uh, which surface I want down. This one I kind of switched around. Um, because there's a little blemish on the inside, I didn't want it to affect the, the route. The route of the router. Why do they call it routers? Rowids. Routers. Another reason I hate this table is uh, the piece will fall off the end right there, you can see, and it wants to wobble and you gotta really stabilize it. Because <laughs> all you need is for that thing to roll on you and they're screwed. I was very lucky that I didn't have anything um, roll too much on me. So I'm not going to show all of them, but uh, this is pretty fun to do. It would be really easy if I had a router table bigger than this. So I got to kind of piece an inch, uh, inch around, make sure I'm stable. So there you have it. Shooting this into the neighbor's yard again. Well, not the bulk of it. Now I'm gonna shoot it into the neighbor's yard. Now it's going to the neighbor's yard. Goodbye, sawdust. Go back to your roots. Take this outside, show you basically what it's looking like. It's exciting when it starts coming into view of what we're doing here. Of course, I'm gonna do a lot more sanding and flattening and building. Pretty That's good. it. All right. It's getting there. Looking pretty good. I just got them mocked up. I get it. We can actually set something on there pretty soon. Thanks for joining. We appreciate it. Please like and subscribe and check out the other ones. And uh, stay tuned for more videos.